ask yourself like afterwards have a look and see what color did you choose and what might that then like what's the color correspondence of that color and see if you can just pull something out of yourself just in direct kind of um your direct your direct connection with that painting or with that artifact like why, why did you choose what you chose for the, for the start is there any correspondence there any message there and then how you responded to it like we know that you were born magical. We know that you are intuitive and we know that you are brimming with everyday enchantment. Here at the Sisters Enchanted, we believe in intention, we believe in intuition, and we believe in everyday magic. Welcome in to the Expedition to Soul podcast. Think about what life would look like if you had the foundation to do the shadow work, understand where you're holding yourself back, and the confidence to bring some everyday magic elements into your life, follow your intuition, and know exactly the steps forward for you. Well, that's what we teach you and more in our Holistic Witchery program. Be sure to get on the wait list for Holistic Witchery. It's the one class we think everybody should take here at the Sisters Enchanted. It has changed so many lives and is at the core of all of our fundamental beliefs about who we are and how we propel ourselves forward in a way that makes great change for ourselves and those around us. Check out holisticwitchery.com, get on the wait list, and we can't wait to welcome you into class just as soon as enrollment opens. Everybody, and hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Expedition to Soul podcast. Sarah Mill and I are back for another week of our astrology forecast for the week ahead. Um, in case you're new here, I haven't introduced our, uh, us, I think, in a little while. I'm Anna. Hello. <laughs> I'm co-founder at the Sisters Enchanted, and I'm here with Sarah Milne, who is one of our astrologers program delivers and teachers extraordinaire here at the Sisters Enchanted. So hello, Sarah. Hello. Hello. How are you doing today? Good. Good. I just had a fright. I thought that my child missed the bus, but did not. (laughs) Did not. Um, So what is going on this week in the sky? Well, we've been focusing a lot on Mercury and communication and, um, like intellectual thought and so forth this week we're going to go a little bit more kind of like into the creative side because we have venus trining with neptune this week and remember we talk about trying as these planets that are that energy is flowing and they're like feeding each other and like working in harmony with each other um so Venus is the planet of our desire. And everyone always talks about Venus as a planet of love. And Venus is, but it's more than that. It's a planet of desires and um, artistry. And of course, we desire love and love is poetic. And that's why love comes into that. But it's also the planet of beauty, of art, of poetry, of music and all that good stuff. And Venus is actually then moving into Gemini on Thursday. So that is Mercury's kind of like kind of Mercury Sutton. So when, and we said last week how Gemini is also lots of experiences and lots of different experiences. So it's going to be quite a social time as well, because Venus is that planet of our relationships and love. So it's going to be quite social and communicative. It could be a good time to be really kind of like um, chatty with people and, you know, like find, find it's easily to be sociable. So, you know, you never know, things might Things might, you might find some new friends and some new even romantic interest <laughs> during this time. But it's a great time to use our imagination. I love this because I am an artist as well as um, in my downtime from Sisters Enchanted. I do love art and I do like running art workshops with other people as well. So this is going to be a really good week for this. So I'm quite excited by this week. So my free top tips and these are like, Every single one of these is making me think, oh, yeah. The first one is this is a great time for an artist, artistic collaboration because we have that Venus in Gemini and that sharing experiences and with um, trying Neptune. So it's like Neptune. Of, I didn't say that Neptune is a planet of our imagination. It was so like into Venus, I forgot to say. <laughs> Neptune is a planet of our imagination and our dreams and our connection with other people. Um So it's a great time for artistic collaboration because we have Venus and Neptune. Neptune loves to connect. Venus is the like social planet. And of course, we have all this artistry and beauty coming together in Gemini. So great time to start an artistic collaboration, particularly if it's um, something where you want to communicate something too. So like 
like the sort of art I love is art that actually communicates a story rather than just looking beautiful. So certainly for that kind of thing, really good week for this. It's also a great day to, um, we talked last week about planning a trip or adventure close to home. This is really a good week for planning a day, exploring somewhere with somebody else, like um, particularly like, Venus loves nature, um, Neptune loves to connect. So it could be really good for a like real nature hike and feeling really connected to everything, connected to the planet and connected to all its goodness and all the peace and beauty that can bring to you. Or a trip to somewhere like museums, a really good um, week for museums because Neptune connects with all of humanity. And so like you could go and explore some real old archetypal history or something like that be really cool um something like that or very social like neptune is very much the planet of uh like connecting to society as well so you might want to go and do something social all these kind of things and it's really i would also think this could be quite cool this is something i think i'm definitely going to try and do this week so my third tip is go to an art gallery this is quite a specific one this this one like go to an art gallery or a museum and Really, because remember, Neptune is that Pisces, really feeling that real kind of like gut feeling where you're almost bypassing your emotions, just feeling it. So go and look at a painting or something artistic and just journal what you felt, what you really felt like without really thinking about it or even thinking about what emotion it was. Just you might want to have a color or a certain way a line goes or something like that. And you do some divination with this. This is a little, a little bit of gameplay here. Do some divination. So rather than pulling cards and all these things that we do, which Anna's about to do now, like ask yourself, like afterwards, have a look and see what color did you choose and what might that then, like what's the color correspondence of that color? And see if you can just pull something out of yourself just in direct kind of, um, your, direct, your direct connection with that painting or with that artifact. Like why, why did you choose what you chose for the, for the start? Is there any correspondence there, any message there? And then how you responded to it, like what messages are in there? And see if there's some, if um you get a divination message from that activity. That would be really good fun this week. It sounds like fun. I also, I love um art and going to like an art museum and like actually taking the minute to stand in front of something. Yeah. Oh, and I just it. like look at it. Mm. Um, and I'm somebody who's easily confronted by like visual um. Mm like things and I have always really enjoyed just looking at something mm. even just regular like I mean what what museum is just regular but just museums and seeing yeah. like there yeah. and just the history behind things and and how how you feel what your what your initial reaction is like yeah. what kind of art are you drawn to which ones yeah. kind of you know mm. make you want to go look at something else, <laughs> you know, like, and really yeah. just thinking about like, why are you feeling that way? And like, well, what color do you see? Some art can make you feel really uneasy, even if the picture yeah. doesn't particularly, isn't, isn't something that like, obviously would make you feel uneasy, but certain colors and certain shapes can make you feel a bit, oh, like looking at this. Yeah. As well. well which is, which is something mm -hmm. I joke around a lot about here at Sisters Enchanted Land is that like, I love mythology, like mm. love it. I am like heads down. I want to read everything, but mm. I also don't like a lot of images from mm. mythology. Like I don't, I have like a statue phobia. I'm pretty sure. Um, or I'm like really confronted by certain art types mm. um, depending on like what mythology it's from. And mm. I like find myself when I'm like looking to like make sure there's not like a picture on the next page. Like I like books filled <laughs> with text and not as many pictures uh, wow. because I'm so confronted. But at the same time, it's something I love, which yeah. makes me feel like there's like a lesson that I need to learn mm. of like, why do I feel so confronted? That is really why weird. isn't it really weird but then like yeah. some imagery is like really soothing to me and mm. I could look at like some mythology imagery like all the time and it's like zero percent confronting it's really interesting yeah. that's interesting but, isn't it I don't like tarot cards that have people just looking out like they're active they're doing things and it's, they're interacting but I don't like that sort of stereo I had that gilded gilded um something tarot once mm -hmm. It just and if people, a lot of people love it, and it's just, I just, it felt like eerie. Just these sort of starey faces, just like yeah. no, creeping out right now. I couldn't yeah. do that. Well, it's weird because like I like I love the deviant moon tarot, and I oh, think no. that they're funny and sarcastic. No, but some people no, are like, that is I not like, for me. 
I had it and I had to, I gave it to somebody. I, I couldn't yeah. do it. Deal with it. Yeah. No. See, like, I love it, but I'm so weird. And I can't like look at a statue without being like, eh, statue, but like the deviant moon, I think it's adorable. And I think it's, it's really funny. Dark. So yeah. dark for me. Felt yeah. so dark. Yeah. So that's, it's, it's funny because everybody is different. Yeah. Um, like I have a lot of decks that I think are visually confronting, but then I can't like open a book of like history and see like a painting or a statue. And I'm like, no, it's like, it's so weird how we're confronted different. Yeah. Um, well, maybe explore those things this week and see what divination there is in the fear. Right. Um, what's really funny is that we talk, we're talking about like art and what colors you see. And mm. today I used one of my favorite decks. Um, my box is falling apart, but, uh, which is the, the Spolia tarot. Mm. And I love this deck of cards. It's got, um, 94 cards in it because it has one for each astrological sign mm. as well as each element. And I thought this was really uh, nice because we're talking about color and like art mm -hmm. this week. And so like, look at the color of saturation beautiful. in this card. And this is the Ace of Cups. And I love this for this week because we have this kind of Neptune, Venus energy, which is mm -hmm. very open and mm -hmm. receptive to things that you want. And that's something mm -hmm. like in mythology, Venus, Aphrodite, uh, she's not just all about like love and lust. She's like, no, I want this and I don't want this. And I'm yeah. going to go after what I want um, and is yeah. very like receptive to mm -hmm. beauty and opportunity and, and, and opportunities and passions around her. Um, so we have this kind of call to action this week to be very open. Mm -hmm. um to receiving and to you know and to nourish things mm -hmm. um with that this isn't a regular tarot card this is just the earth card in this deck oh, so we just yeah. need a lot of just earth and growth here um but again how sarah said this is a really great week to kind of like get back to nature see beautiful things around you and connect mm -hmm. and what better element do you have to connect with than earth and this reminds me of the, you know, our five I uh, framework spiral mm -hmm. and how intentions are our, um, is our, one of our eyes, our first eye yeah. intention. And it's, it's connected to the element of earth and how important it is to, you know, have open like reception for what you need, um, knowing what you need. Uh, and opening up for gratitude and abundance to let intentions come in, to really do the footwork, to let yourself be open to receiving mm -hmm. and then be an active participant. So I think in this week, really challenging yourself to what do I want? Because yeah. so oftentimes we don't live life intentionally because we make intentions or we make goals or something that we want to do by just picking something out of the air. Like mm -hmm. I, I want to, I want to lose weight which is like not really a great intention. And it's something that people say because they feel like that's something that they have to do, but it's not always a great intention because their heart's not always in it, mm -hmm. you know, do, being healthier in my body, you know, and then making like a smaller intention down, like that's something easier. So I feel like with this kind of imaginative, open, receptive Venus self-love energy, because it's not just about like love everywhere. It's a lot about self-love. Um, Aphrodite loves herself so much that she will do what she thinks is best for her. Um, that it is a great week to be, to allow yourself to really imagine and sink into what it is that you really want yeah. and then bring that down to earth into your being and start doing the creative, the, mm -hmm. the inspiring things that make that intention come to life, which is yeah. something that we don't tend to do. So I feel like this is a great week to like, be inspired. Yeah. To really do something. I love that. In fact, that we don't even need another kind of thing to finish with. Be inspired to really do something. I love that. Be inspired. Yeah. And so. I'll add the connection as well because of Neptune. So like Neptune is imagination, but also connection. So maybe be inspired to really do something and share that with other people. And this world needs some kind of like Venus connection, like Venus, like Neptune connection right now. So. I love it. Yeah. What a great, that one was great. I'm feeling oh. like, ah, like a breath of Me fresh too. air. <laughs> Me too, yeah. Yes. All right. Well, on that note, take a big self-love mm -hmm. Venus breath in and out and really take hold of this week and be inspired. So Sarah, thanks for coming on this week and inspiring us to become inspired. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah.
So thank you all for joining us on another Expedition to Soul podcast. Uh, as I said, we're Sarah Milne and I'm Anna, and we will be here next week too and the week after that with more astrology forecasts. And we hope that you have a really great week ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Bye, everyone. If you liked this episode of the Expedition to Soul podcast, please rate, review, subscribe. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, it will really help us spread everyday magic, intention, and intuition to the masses and helps us so much as a small business. Be sure to hit that subscribe button on your favorite podcasting platforms. So you never miss an episode. There are new episodes every Tuesday and astro forecasts for the week ahead every Friday. If there's any topics you'd want to hear, anything you want us to dive deeper into, shoot us an email at magic at the sisters enchanted.com. And as always, thank you so much for listening and being part of the community here at the sisters enchanted, and we'll see you in the next episode. Mm -hmm.